In this video, we'll be using Sawtree's terrain module to model a gravel pit. And specifically, we'll be grading between two surfaces. We have an original ground surface, and we have a surface that represents the bottom of the gravel. And I want to grade down between them. So it's a little different than most grading operations, where you start with a, uh, a constant elevation and grade to the surface. Uh, in this case, we, we want to go between two. So this is the final product. It looks like that. And let's go back to a file I have open that shows the raw data. So here we have the original ground in the background. That's the gray surface. And underneath that gray surface is an olive green surface that represents the bottom of the gravel. And there are um, points that are made from uh, drill core data. And there's also a line where the gravel pinches out um, and the rock is outcropping above. So this is manufactured data and uh, I'm not a geologist or a mining engineer so I apologize for any uh, mistakes in jargon or um, other things but I know the terrain software well and that's what we're going to be looking at. So I made this surface. It's the current surface in this model and uh, it has a nice boundary, so there's no surface extending outside of my data. Um, the original ground is in the background, so I can actually calculate the volume, the total volume uh, between these two very, very quickly. Yeah, just to show that the uh, background has the original ground in it. And here's the volume calculation in our terrain module uh, modeling. Um, calculate volumes. Just need to set the target surface and push the button. So here's the total volume. It's showing us cut, but sometimes these are reversed and it would show you fill here, which is wrong. Um, the final is the current surface. That's the bottom of the gravel. Uh, the original is the um, original ground and the volume between is 745, roughly 750,000 cubic meters. That's the most I could get out of this if I mined it all. Um, but I have a property boundary. So now I'd like to find out how much volume can I get out inside my property boundary. Okay, so let's let's get the property boundary first. So I have it in another terrain. I'm just going to copy it. Control C or I can take it from the right click menu and go back to my surface and paste it in. So there's there's my uh, boundary and if I change that into a surface volume boundary and then redo the volume calculations I can check this volumes by surface poly, uh, volumes and surface by polygon uh, and now I get a completely different result. It's now 354,000 cubic meters, roughly half and uh, yeah remember that number 350,000 cubic meters of material is the most I can get inside this polygon. That would be with vertical walls. Now I don't want vertical walls. I want a, um, a cut angle down to the bottom of the gravel. How am I going to calculate that volume? What we do is we take this boundary and we drape it onto the original ground and then we use that to grade down to the surface below. So let's do that. So what I'll do is I will um, copy this, well I've got the feature on the clipboard already, um, I'll copy it again and then at least I'll get this property and I'm going to start with a new terrain. When you're using our grading tools it's wise to start from an empty terrain that contains your polygons of interest and then the background contains your surfaces so I'll put in the original ground 
and the surface I'm grading to, which is the ore bottom. So that sets things up. Now this, this feature right now is a two-dimensional feature. The elevations are undefined. Let's drape it on the original ground so it, at least it's at the right elevation. Otherwise it's, it's not a good starting point for my grading. I can drape it here, tin operations drape, and I just choose the original ground to drape it on. Include tin points is important. That will densify the feature. Currently there's only eight points in that feature. Um, when I drape it, I pick up a whole bunch more. It's now 876 points and it's um, got elevations defined. I'm also going to make it a modeled feature because it will be part of a surface when I'm finished. I don't care about that surface volume boundary anymore. Right, so I'm ready to grade. I've got a, a three-dimensional polygon which is sitting on the original ground and I want to grade it down. So to grade downwards I need to know the orientation of this thing and uh, when I click on the next button here I can see the current point moving in a clockwise direction so inwards is right so I'm grading inwards to the ore I want to go down at a 2 to 1 slope or 50 percent um, I don't need extra points but often it's nice to add extra points to build more slope lines to make it more accurate and that's all I need to do. Let's do that operation. So it looks okay, except what's happening on the top here? Well, it turns out, here's the 3D view of it, uh, it's not hitting this, the surface at the top. That kind of makes sense. The surface stops right about here. So I need to remove that part of my polygon. Let's do that. I need this feature, the uh, place where the outcrop ends and the gravel begins. I need that feature. It's in this file here. No, it's not. I want to open the ore bottom file and copy this feature. Control C, copy. Control V, paste. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a function for deleting all the slope lines. These are the slope lines that go between the polygon and the target. Um, they do automatically get deleted when you regrade, but I want them out of there now. So I'm just going to select my two important features, property and outcrop, and invert that selection and delete. Okay, now I've only got two features. Um, if I select them both and do a break at current feature, that chops the end off my property boundary. I'll just delete. It happens to be selected. If it wasn't, I would click on it. I'll delete that. Um, I could do that operation a second time with this selected to break that one, but it's actually pretty easy just to break it by hand. Control Q, that piece I don't want. Delete. This now should connect to that. So I select and then shift click to select them both and Control J join. All these things are up here if you forget the keystrokes. Okay, that's this corner. Now let's do the other corner. Again, I can just click here, break at current point, control Q. This feature is already selected, delete. And now I want these two to be one feature, control J, join. Um, it picked the wrong name, that's too bad. Let's change that to property uh, and change the color and line. pick that color. Okay. And I don't need this feature. It's not there anymore. I deleted it. You can see it in the background though. 
Okay, so I've now got a polygon. It's still draped on the surface. This one was already on the surface. This one was draped from my previous action. And just to double check, it says 720 there. And if I hover my mouse right next to it, it says 720. Okay, so my polygon is sitting on the surface and now it's ready to grade. And I'll just do that. So train model and grade. And because of the way I joined them together, it forgot my settings, so I gotta redo that. Anyway, right or bottom, 50%, and I don't need these points. I won't include them this time and recalculate. Oops, it, it changed its direction. I have two options here. I can re-change the grade from um, left to right, or I could reverse the feature, either one. Right to left, there we go. That's better, and we're almost ready. Um, did I change the slope? I forgot to change the slope. The nice thing is that once you've um, got the feature defined, you can, um, it remembers the other settings. That's better. Now I can build a surface right now. If I build a surface, I probably want to select the property boundary and make it a tin boundary. Um, well, why don't I leave that off for a sec and show you what happens. So first of all, if I generate a surface and I include all points, let's also skip the contours. It looks like that. Now there's two issues here. Uh, one is that I've got the stray surface on the outside here that I don't want. Uh, it's literally drawing triangles across between these lines. Um, the other problem is the bottom is defined by interpolating across between the two, the toe of cut. So it's not picking up the surface that is defined by the, uh, the drill holes. So let's fix both of those. Won't take long. I just select my boundary and make it into a tin boundary. That will get rid of these tray triangles and apply. And now I'm going to select this interior polygon that was created. It's called tin boundary now, which is a bit confusing. It would be the tin boundary if we had graded outwards. Um, but in this case, it's just the toe of cut. So I'm going to change its name, call it cut toe and apply. And I've selected it, let's copy it and go back to here, paste it in there, and now use it to select everything inside of it. So I've selected the drill hole bottoms that are inside that polygon. Sometimes the selection process doesn't work because these features are all connected together. In that case, you would have needed to do a, um, a break first, break at polygon. That would be this one, break at current feature. But I've got the features I want selected, so let's copy them. Go back to my model and control V paste. So now I've got some points in the bottom of my pit that represent the uh, original ore body definition. And if I rebuild my model, there's some, some actual uh, shape to the bottom of the pit because those points have been included in the model. And you can see also I don't have those straight triangles here. That's basically it. We've got the final shape so let's calculate the volume. And I haven't even saved this, which is why the top is blank. Um, I want to compare it with the original ground. That's correct. I don't care about polygons. And the final volume is a little bit less than the original 350,000. Now it's 274,000 cubic meters. And it's got these organized correctly. Good. There's a copy to clipboard for this if you need the data. Um, might be nice to look at a cross-section, so let's create one. 
a cross section would be a modeled feature with elevations undefined like so and I'm going to draw it with the mouse I'm going to draw from over here to over there and you can see it in the 3D window if you want to see the actual cross section we need to create a profile window down in the lower left and there it is and you can see we've got a cross section that um, cuts down to the ore body goes up and then back up to the other side you can see the cursor moving in both windows and that's dynamic I can move that around and look at cross sections elsewhere um, yeah so with those tools I could make uh, a fairly nice output I'm not going to show you the details but let me just jump to an example file that I created this we were looking at right at the beginning of the um, example and in the background here is a multi-plot which shows that I've actually created a bunch of different cross sections and uh, I've placed the various windows together on this page so that we can make something fairly presentable. There's a, a scale bar for plan and profile. They're different from each other. Um, these four cross sections rep are represented by these four windows. There's one, two, three, and the fourth one's over here. Um, the 3D window is the 3D window and you can move it around and get it where you want and then this could be printed to PDF for example. That's the end of our grading between surfaces example. Thank you.